This year, we have had the pleasure to deep dive into the story of Elizabeth Mars. The Mars family is so remarkable in so many ways. They broke social norms and redefined their lives. Jupiter Mars, with the help of his sons, bought themselves out of slavery and bought a home in Pittsfield, Mass. Each member of the family has an incredible story. Jupiter fought in the American Revolution. James Mars was a political activist and deacon in a church in Hartford. He also wrote a book called A Slave Bought and Sold in Connecticut. Though remarkable, this story isn't about them. The story is of Elizabeth Mars, the, the youngest in the Mars family. There wasn't any real material we can find about her, so Rusty and I took a deeper dive, and her story's incredible. We believe, though hidden, her story truly outshines the other members in her family. And what makes it incredible is it starts in our backyard in Canaan, Connecticut. To truly understand her story, though, there are some contextual aspects at the time that you need to understand. The Back to Africa movement was a popular idea in the 1800s, and the concept of it was freeing the enslaved and shipping them back to Africa. One reason this was popular amongst most white Americans is because they were worried that, about what recently happened in Haiti. What happened in Haiti was a major slave revolt happen where a lot of enslavers were killed. The Back to Africa mo movement might resonate with Elizabeth because some black missionaries embraced um, called to witness by Anne Wimberley's points of looking upon Africa as their ancestral home, uh, spreading the gospel, contributing to the quality of life among whom those they, they considered their own people, and they also proved to be pathfinders who created new ways of serving as women. Born to formerly enslaved parents, Elizabeth was born in Norfolk, Connecticut. Um, she likely traveled back to Hartford because her brother James was a deacon in the Hartford's Talcott Street Church. Um, she was raised in the home of Thomas H. Gallaudet, who was the founder of the Asylum for Deaf and Dumb. She then went to Pennsylvania, where she was taught to read and write by Quakers, with this information, she became a school teacher in the infant school in Hartford. From here, she met a man by the name of William Johnson. At the time, Mr. Johnson was an, an African missionary school created by the Episcopal Church to take part in a missionary trip to Liberia. After public backlash, Mars and her husband were put through more schooling in New York in preparation for the trip. Finally, Mars makes the trip and lands herself in Cape Palmas, Liberia, where she works for 34 years educating the Liberian people with over 90 students in her class every day. James Mars, Elizabeth's husband, dies, and she returns to Cape Palmas where she resumes teaching as her relationships with other missionaries start to deteriorate. She thinks about going back to America. Elizabeth returns to America for a final time where she stays with James Mars in Hartford and, according to her brother, aspired him to write his book, A Slave Bought and Stolen in Connecticut. Elizabeth returns to Cape Palmas where she works for one year um, and resigns a year later. Finally, in 1864, Elizabeth goes to St. Mark's Hospital where she dies in August. During her life, a confidential letter written by Jackson Kemper, secretary of the Domestic and Foreign Missionary Society, in March of 1831, detailed her trip and what she was doing. He also called the old men on her trip dullards, and she, it, he said, Elizabeth Mars is the star of the show. She's going to make an impact. This again shows the significance of her life. What makes her story so remarkable and she had such a crazy impact on Liberia that after she died, Liberia threw a massive um, funeral, kind of like a, a parade in her honor, um, which is absolutely amazing. Like, let's break this down, right? Here's this uh, woman, right, that was born in Norfolk, Connecticut, um, to an enslaved parents, right? And she has a parade thrown in her honor because of an impact that she made. I mean, that's just... That's absolutely incredible.